All right, this is Jimmy Cavs Tape to Broadcast, 50 with 50 interview series in Bulldozer Magazine here in the throne of heaviness with the Lord of Southern, Greg Anderson. How you doing? Good. How's it going? Good. Let me, let me uh, backtrack a little bit. I would say, what, six years ago, 2010, was the first Power of the Riff? That's right. Yeah, 2010. Summer, summer of 2010. You and Sam Veldi are the organizers of the Power of the Riff? That's right. Yeah. True music fans, let me just give you a little uh, a little praise here. One of the things that I've always admired about Southern Lord Records and then the power of the riff is the fact that you really go out of your way being music fans to expose audiences to incredible extreme underground music. Be that as it may, I've also noticed that within the last couple of years, which I appreciate, you're really going into the back catalogs of the older bands that were at the time when they were playing ahead of their time. And now with this new generation that is swallowing everything up, you're exposing this generation. Poison Idea, Excel, on and on and on. Be that as it may, the power of the riff, I think, is one of the pivotal festivals here in Los Angeles where it's groundbreaking, it's organic, and it's sincere. But you tell me, what were the origins of the power of the riff? Well, I think you kind of nailed some of where we're, where our heads were at with that stuff uh, and mentioning the bands that you did and what we've been about, the label has been about. But um, we just noticed that there wasn't really anything at that time, especially um, there, was, there wasn't any sort of gathering or uh, festival of music that was, was representing really good underground heavy music. And then we felt that there was a lot of great bands and would, it would be really cool to put something together that showcased some of the bands that we really liked and we thought people should hear, hear and see. So um, we, we also had a really great opportunity at the time to collaborate with um, the people from the Echoplex. You know, they, they invited us to do the event there. They, they were really interested in sort of developing this idea of a festival um, an, a heavy, an underground heavy music festival in Los Angeles. So, I mean, obviously there has been other ones. You know, Murder Fest is a is a great example of another fest. But, <clears throat> you know, there's doesn't in comparison to other places, it didn't seem like there was as a, a lot of festivals happening. So, um, decided to put it together. You know, and hopefully get some bands that we really liked. Hopefully they were available to play and put it together for, for fans to see. One of the things, you're very humble by the way, one of the things that I've always appreciated about each and every Power of the Riff uh, uh, show is the fact that you really bring out artists that, as I mentioned before, were ahead of their time or in some cases never even played here in Los Angeles. Like for instance, Winter, you've had Pentagram, you've had The Obsessed, you've had I Hate God, C.O.C., before, before uh, Pepper when they were the three-piece. I like the fact that it's really a festival where if you're an extreme music fan, you get to experience bands that are maybe known, and then you go out of your way to expose new bands. Do you find that as a benefit for you to uh, have that as a launching pad for some of the bands that you expose that are on your label? Yeah, for sure. I mean, you know, kind of the idea is, is one, of the, one of the ideas we had with by doing the festival was really to try to to showcase bands that people probably had not seen before and not heard before and pair them with bands that people obviously were were popular and had you know um, that we knew a lot of people would come out to see I mean that's kind of the idea and so hopefully they're gonna come for the whole event you know this year we decided to do it um, instead of one day we decided to just spread it over two days and had less bands um, and the days won't be as quite as long and we, we decided to do that because we're kind of hoping for the exact same reason of like hoping that people will come early and you know stay for the later stuff so um so we'll see i hope so <laughs> what i like about the power of the riff and what you and sam do is the fact that you really are not quote unquote being promoters in other words of course you want to make a profit and you want to cover your costs but you've also opened it up to bands like final conflict dr no i mentioned before excel where in some cases some of these bands may have a draw they don't have a draw it's just overall good music you don't go into it my opinion as a promoter you go into it as a music fan do you feel that the audience 
absorbs that and that's why the power of the riff has withstand it all these years because it is difficult having a festival especially here in la yeah for sure i mean i, I think Very difficult, I, I look at it more as a curation you know Spoiled and, motherfuckers here. yeah but I, I feel like we're curators you know we, we will put together a lineup that we feel is that, that we like you know that we're enthusiastic about and that you know we we, uh, we also think that other folks will in, enjoy seeing so it is kind of coming at it from a fan perspective first rather than a business perspective but we're 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 fortunate in that way that we sort of have you know we have the people from the echoplex for example um which is their company is called spaceland presents those people are have basically put some faith in us and you know they're they're really the ones that have uh are taking the financial risks so sam and i are actually more the, the curators in this in this thing and we're sort of you know uh we're putting together the the, the bands and regardlessness of, of really the the financial aspect of it of course we have a budget to work within but um you know it's really sort of again it's that sort of look coming at it as a fan first and a a promoter second or hardly at all actually you know as far as that goes but we're actually you know as far as a promoter goes we're actually promoting the show as much as we possibly can and heavily but um but it's traditional promoter sense where the the business um aspect is involved we're sort of we're actually sort of not necessarily not really involved with that you know and this for this festival i've always enjoyed the fact with every power of the rift there's always an evolution there's always a uh, uh, someone like myself who thinks they've seen it all done it all i'm always pleasantly surprised with the li- with the lineups this year is very interesting let's talk about two dates december 17th december 18th december 17th wolves and throne room is headlining how did you choose that headline? Well, Southern Lord has worked with Wolves in the Throne Room quite a Amazing bit over the last, yeah, over the last 10 years or so. Um, put out several of the records and huge fan of the band. They're one of the, you know, one of the things that Sam and I wanted to do with this festival this year, and we took a few years off. Uh, <clears throat> so this year coming back, you know, there nowadays there are a lot of really great festivals and there's there's just a lot of festivals in general and if you look at these festivals a lot of them sort of have the same lineups that other festivals have and we wanted to do something s- somewhat different and wanted to have bands that don't play a lot of these festivals a lot a lot also have bands that don't play hardly at all and wolves in the throne room is a perfect example of that they um they've kind of been on and off hiatus for a while and i noticed that they <clears throat> i um that they had gotten back together recently to do a tour, um, which they went out, made it out to the East Coast, and it's like, oh, okay, they're playing again. So we <laughs> contacted them about possibly doing this, um, and uh, they were really excited to do it. I think also for the fact that you know, uh, the lineup that we you know we shared with them, who was also playing, you know, that we had confirmed at that time, and they saw that that it was different. It was going to be a different kind of festival. It wasn't going to be just another death fest basically which is you know and i love the death fest i think those are great festivals but we want to do something a little bit different having different kinds of bands that might not play a more metal fest like a death fest and also have bands that don't play all the festivals a lot or play or don't play very often so i appreciate that you do that because as i mentioned before you know when i go to these shows i'm a fucking old man dude after a while everything becomes mundane because my back is killing me i like the fact that when you go to a festival and there's such a different lineup it keeps your interest not only as a music fan but it makes you want to be there throughout the whole event uh you mentioned other festivals one of the things that i've always really appreciated uh, about power of the rift is the fact that regardless of what is going on at the times meaning 2010 the heavy music genre wasn't as remarkable as it is now let me make it even even more uh clear cut there's chicks at your shows now dude hot chicks like now i comb my hair to go to the shows <laughs> whole different demographic young kids good looking chicks and then old fuckers like myself but the music is what always gathered us all there second night neurosis is the headline incredible band a band that's been around for so long but now has been world acclaim getting the success that they deserve and yet they still retain the integrity playing a very credible festival like yourselves how did you get them to play on that well i've been uh uh in contact and friends with those guys for for quite a while actually and he i mean 
first of all, a huge fan and have massive amounts of respect for those guys. We've been trying to get those guys to play Power of the Rift for quite a long time, and it just never worked out. This year, they had a new record coming out. They happened to be doing shows. They wanted to do some shows on the West Coast right around the same time. So, I mean, truth be told, we sort of built the dates and the festival initially around Neurosis's availability to do this. When we found out that they were, in, first of all, interested, well, they, they, they told us several years ago, too, when we've been asking that they were interested, but the timing was right. But so we knew they were interested, and when they told us their availability, when they would, when they would be able to do it, we really kind of like, okay, well, this is when we, well, let's build it around this, because they're, they're, an, they're a very important band, and um, again, they don't play very often, and they don't play a lot of these fests. Um, so it was like it was perfect, you know, for us, to, and we were really excited to be able to have them, and I think it's going to be it's going to be amazing. So.